Hi y'all. We're gonna be canning some chicken today. Yes, let's get started. First off, we got some um, chicken broth here. We're just gonna pull off the fat on top here. If you didn't see our chicken, chicken broth recipe, we have that. Maybe we can link it below for you. This is just the same old way we do chicken broth in our pressure canner. And then we put it in the fridge just to get this fat off of it. It just hardens up. This has been sitting out, so it's a little, little soft, but um, it'll harden up and float to the top for you and you can get it right off of there. Alright, there you go. Nothing to I have um, chicken on the stove that was some rotisserie chicken that we had. Um, we are warming it up and I'm going to warm up our chicken broth so that we can go ahead and um, put it in jars and can it up. So let's go over to the stove. Alright, so we're just going to pour this into this. This is already on and it's just warming up. We're just going to warm our broth up along with the chicken here because it's cooked chicken. We'll do another video on um, canning raw chicken. It's essentially the same process. You just have to do. You can also do this like with a turkey. For some reason, let's say you at Thanksgiving, you had extra turkey left over and you didn't know what to do with all that. You could definitely can it up. You don't have to do quarts. We're doing quarts today. Um, but you could do pints if you wanted and, you know, have turkey already. You're not wasting that turkey if you don't know what to do with it. Okay, so this is nice. We just had to bring it up, um, get a little warm. You know, you don't want cold broth going into a hot jar. So uh, we just warmed it up with our chicken in here. And uh, back here we have a warmed uh, pan of, oh, that was warm, of our lids. Just so they're softening and we have our pressure cooker canner here and he's ready to go so everybody's ready to roll our jars are hot and in the sink mm -hmm. with hot water on them so we're going to get this canned up I'm just gonna pack it. You want one inch headspace on uh, your jars. This makes wonderful chicken noodle soup or chicken mm -hmm. and noodles, or um, if you want to do chicken and gravy over toast or over mashed potatoes. Uh, we kind of prefer turkey on that one, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we do also do chicken on that particular thing. And chicken spaghetti. We made um a recipe on how to do that. Right. Chicken spaghetti is another good one. Mm -hmm. Love that. Delicious. So you want one inch headspace. And so I'm going to hand these jars off to Isabella and she's going to let out any air bubbles. I got that one too thick. She'll let out any air bubbles and then we can adjust the, the, um, headspace at that time once she's finished doing that yeah so I just slide it down in the corners and then pull it towards the center yeah want to make sure your chickens covered in some broth here yep. okay 
it's nice to get a variety with the dark meat and the white meat we've done just um white meat and it tends to um get a little dry if you don't have a little bit of that dark meat in there yeah. for some reason it just it just tastes way better so that's a little tip if you're if you're just starting out or if you've had issues before good gauge is whenever you need a one inch headspace is just right here at this lip that's where you need to go we like this also canned chicken for um chicken broccoli rice it is a real fast dish so if you need a real quick dinner the nice thing about having your meat done is everything else goes smoothly typically <laughs> right yeah if you have your meat done uh supper goes a lot faster mm -hmm. and we've even can canned hamburger which mm -hmm. makes um hamburger helper homemade version so uh, much easier right also when you're even doing spaghetti or anything like that it's already cooked up for you you can throw that together pretty easily yeah you top those off i guess huh? yeah i think so a little bit and you can adjust like I like to pack it in, so it might be a little too much meat in this one, and we can put a little more broth in there to help him out. Same on this guy. That's good. That's a big old hunk. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one off a little. You know, and try our broth you'll I really encourage you to do that broth it's um, a wonderful way to get a really rich rich broth mm -hmm. and um, you'll never go back to store-bought broth after that I promise yeah. <laughs> a little too easy and uh, tastes delicious yeah it really does so this guy is about done I want to try to get most of his meat out now this is going to be basically meat uh, broth here because we don't have it more done with our chicken. So I'm going to try to get as much out as we can here. Need it. Anybody need topped off? Did we get them all pretty Maybe good? That guy. This guy needs a little more. Just a little bit. You sure? Yeah. 
Mm. Not bad. We have about a ladle left of uh, juice here, a broth. Yeah. Now I'm just going to take a rag and dip it in some vinegar and wipe the rims off. Nice and nice and generous on the vinegar. It helps to alleviate any fat that is on your lids and it will help for the lids to seal. So she's going to go through here and you'll see her adjust her rag periodically and uh, dip a different section of it in the vinegar and then we're just wiping the rims. Biggest size. I'll go behind you. Okay. I want to see if this is still hot. I don't want to see that on the countertop. I'll show you what book we use um, for canning also. There's always the ball blue book that they have out there. It's a nice one. Gives you all the instructions on canning. Um, we have one that we, we've kind of enjoyed playing with some of the recipes in there and whatnot over the last few years. Yeah. Got, okay, you got that. Okay. Now you just want to screw these on fingertip tight. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm going to take the lid off of our pressure canner because we can start putting these in. So your pressure canners, whichever variety you choose, there's several out there. Um, They'll give you the instructions on what you're supposed to do, how much water is supposed to be in here, um, and how much you have to vent and that sort of thing. So they pretty much all run pretty close to, to the same. Uh, we've had different ones over the years, um, but check your manual. I don't want to give you wrong advice there. It's always best to be uh, err on the side of caution, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and put these in. We have our little bit of water in here and then uh, we're going to put these in and then we'll, sh we'll do the next step. one here we go all right put the lid on okay so we got our lid on we're gonna let him do his thing he'll have to the vent out of here when the the when it starts uh steam starts coming out of here then you'll time it for for hours it's 10 minutes um it but it check your manual and uh, then you can see what yours is. And then after that 10 minutes is when you put your pressure weights on. So um, we're gonna wait for this to vent and then we'll vent it for 10 minutes. Then we'll put our weight on. And then after that, um, we're gonna time it for 90 minutes. You, you do your chicken for 90 minutes. And then after the 90 minutes, we'll take them all out and we'll bring you along for that. I almost forgot. We said we'd show you the canning book we use, and this is the one. This is one of our favorites. This is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, um, and we absolutely love many of the recipes in here. As you can see, we have all the little tags, tags on there. So this is a good one. If you don't have this one, um, I'm sure Amazon or your local bookstore would have it. Um, we do enjoy it. Okay, so our timer has went off and our pressure canner has released all of its pressure. You have to wait till that happens. And the way you know that is by uh, moving your weight, right? And it's not making any um, air release noises. So we can take him off. 
and we can safely open our canner now. Now we're going to remove our jar. You don't want any, um, if you have a fan going or a window open, at this point you'll want to close those just until you get your jars out of your canner. You don't want any cool air hitting them um, because, <laughs> that's a beautiful sound, because it could bust the jar. So just err on the side of caution. So oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just back a little. We always sit them out on a towel, a kitchen towel, and we leave a little space between them so there's airflow so that they can cool off properly. go okay guys that is all there is to it now we will let our jars cool off over here probably overnight that's usually what we do and then um, once they're cool we'll wash them in some warm soapy water and take off the bands now any that don't seal if you if you have that so occasionally we have that but very rarely if you don't have, if they don't seal, you can put them in the fridge and use them up, you know, pretty quickly. Yep. I know people who leave the bands on, but we take the, the, band, the bands off and then, you know, we put the date on the lid. And um, just in case for any reason, if it doesn't, if the seal breaks, then you know that that can is no good. And if, if the band is on there, um, you won't necessarily know that always. So we just want to, again, err on the side of caution. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you can or if you have never canned meat and what kind of meat have you canned. Um, one thing we have never done is fish, and we yeah. would love to um, can some fish, like salmon or tuna or something like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. We just don't live in a region where that is easily accessible for us. As always, guys, keep it simple and fun. Also, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss any of these fun videos.